everyone and welcome back. In a recent video, I went through an implementation of a conventional queue where you NQ at the rear or the back of the queue and you DQ at the front or the head of the queue. We implemented this as a link list. So our NQing was simply appending nodes with a tail pointer and our DQ was simply deleting from the front using a head pointer. Now I wanna come back and implement a priority queue which is like a queue, except that instead of only being able to NQ items at the rear of the queue, we get NQ items anywhere in the queue, except we're specifically going to NQ an item based on its priority. So the priority for us will just simply be the integer value in our linked list node. We'll say that whatever node value we're trying to NQ into our queue will be its priority. So we could rename this to priority, but then we have to change a few places. So I'll just leave it as is. Know that to make this solutions more specific, say for like a song playlist or for implementing say like a processor scheduling algorithm using a queue, or maybe simulating that grocery store line that we were talking about in a previous video, I could add additional attributes or members to my node struct to represent that more specific application data. And then just let an integer like value or priority represent the priority of this node. All right, so why would we use a priority queue? Well, with a priority queue, our queue is always sorted by priority. We can say that higher priority items are towards the front of the queue, meaning they're gonna be dequeued the soonest. And our lower priority items are at the back of the queue, meaning they're not going to be dequeued anytime soon. So effectively what we're going to do is we're going to write an insert in order that works with our link list and its new tail pointer. And then we can have a priority queue that simply calls our insert in order and inserts a new item into our queue by its priority or its integer value. Let's draw a picture and then we'll do the code. So let's say that my queue looks like this. Let's say it has the single value five. All right, now I have this new value. Let's say it is three and I want to NQ three. Okay, so just recall that we NQ at the rear of our link list. And we DQ at the front of our link list. And we don't want to forget our tail pointer here. All right, so if this is a priority queue, okay, we're going to NQ such that our integer value goes in its sorted order position. So this is gonna be pretty easy to do because three will still go at the end of our list because three has the smallest priority of our list so far. So here is three, we update our tail. Not a big deal. Okay, now let's say I want to NQ 10. I wanna NQ 10. Well, 10 has a higher priority than the three and the five. In fact, it's gonna have the highest priority. So we're not gonna put it at the tail of the list like we would with a conventional queue we're actually going to put it at the head of the list because it has the highest priority, which means it should be dequeued before any of these other nodes in the list. So let me draw my 10 here, and then our head pointer is now going to point to 10. All right, let's do another example. Let's say we want to NQ, do a different color here. Let's say we want to NQ seven, okay? 
So with a conventional queue, we would put seven at the end of our list, but with a priority queue, we're gonna insert it in its sorted order by priority. So seven should go between the 10 and the five. So our insert in order for our linked list is gonna do that. So I'm gonna have this node seven be inserted in between the 10 and the five. All right, let's call that good for our example. Just to recap, we're still end queuing at the rear of our queue, which is the tail of our linked list, and we're still dequeuing at the front of our queue, which is the head of our linked list. But we're going to be end queuing in order. We're not always just gonna end queue at the end. So if something comes in with a higher priority than our last node in our list, then it needs to be moved up to a higher position in our list. So the example I gave in a video or two ago about a priority queue uh, would be, think about if you're going to the doctor and you have like a, a minor injury, but somebody comes in after you with a life-threatening injury, right? You would want and you would expect that because that person with a life-threatening injury has a higher priority than you, then they're going to be dequeued from the queue before you, right? So they effectively get to kind of move up or cut the line, so to speak, but for many applications, that's what we want. For like a grocery store line, for example, we necessarily wouldn't want a priority queue, we want a conventional queue because generally cutting people in line, meaning you move up further in the queue when you arrived later than some of the people already in the queue is frowned upon. But you can think about not all lines are modeled after conventional queues, right? Like if you think about some of the theme parks nowadays, like Disneyland, Disney World, Universal Studios, et cetera, you can buy the Fast Pass where you can pay to cut people in line, right? Clearly that's not a conventional queue, right? When you get to ride the ride is not necessarily dependent on when you arrived at the line for the ride if you have higher priority than people who are already in line. So these kinds of priority queues exist in the real world, obviously, uh, and then I also give a few examples like um, you can have, say, a priority queue for a playlist of songs where you might just add a song to the queue, but then you want to hear it sooner. So you move it up more towards the front of your queue. And then also with operating systems. So your operating system uses a priority queue in order to schedule jobs that run on your CPU. Some jobs have higher priority than others, right? Like things related to the operating system itself should have a higher priority to run than say my OneNote application that I'm running here. All right, hopefully you're feeling the motivation for priority queues and this little example where we effectively just did a linked list insert in order helped make sense of how we could implement a priority queue using a linked list. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to add back into our linked list our insert in order. I had deleted it earlier because we didn't need it for our conventional queue and I didn't want to update it at the time to work with our tail pointer, but now is the time to bring it back in. So I'm just going to copy and paste in our insert in order from a previous video and we'll go ahead and update it for use with the tail pointer. All right, so here's our insert in order. It's got that new value where we make a node and set that new node's value to be this parameter value here. All right, we've got two cases, just like we do for our append node. First off, if the list is empty, then head's gonna point to the new node. So is our tail. And then next, if the list isn't empty, then we've got to walk through and find out where to insert this node. So this is where we compare our priorities in order to find out where to insert our node with its given priority so that it's in sorted order by priority. All right, so we don't need to change anything with the searching code, that's fine. Okay, so now down here, we broke out of this loop and we've got to find out why we broke out of the loop. If we get here to this case, we know that the list isn't empty and we're gonna be updating our head pointer. We don't need to touch our tail pointer. But this case down here, we do need to add some code to. 
This is where the list isn't empty and we're inserting at somewhere other than the head. All right, so what we need to do is we need to check to see if new nodes next is null. If new nodes next is null, then we have a new last node in the list. If this is the case, then we need to update our tail pointer to point to new node. All right, the last thing that we need to do in order to update our insert in order is make sure that we're actually inserting in descending sorted order, right? Because we want our larger priority values at the head and our smaller priority values at the tail. So what I have right here for this while loop where we walk through and we check to make sure that Kernode's value is less than new value, I'm actually gonna change this to be a greater than sign. That way we'll have a descending sorted list and at the head of our list, which remember is the front of our queue, we'll have the higher values. All right, next what I'm gonna do is head over to queue.cpp and talk about how we could implement our priority queue by calling our insert in order. Well, I could simply comment out a pen node and call uh, insert in order, passing a new value, and I would have a priority queue now. This isn't the solution that I'm going to end up using because it's not very versatile, right? If I wanna switch between a conventional queue and a priority queue, I'd have to come in, make a change, save and recompile my code. Instead, I'm gonna have a more extensible solution where I'm going to leave my queue as is, as a conventional queue. And instead, I'm going to define a priority queue class. And it's not gonna be as much work as this queue class because with inheritance, I can reuse this code. I'm gonna define a priority queue that is going to inherit from this queue. The only difference is it's gonna redefine NQ so that it calls insert in order instead of append node. All right, so to lay the groundwork for this, in q.h, I'm going to update our nq function to be virtual. That way, at runtime, dynamic binding will take any actual priority queue object and invoke its nq, instead of resolving to a more general nq for a conventional queue, if maybe that actual priority queue is pointed to or referenced by a queue type. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create my priorityqueue.cpp and my priorityqueue.h files. And I've got some boilerplate code to write in each of these. So give me a little bit of time to do that. And then we'll do the specific implementation of NQ for our priority queue. I'm gonna to need to include q.h because I'm going to establish an inheritance hierarchy using it. So here's my priority q class. And it's going to inherit from q. And all I need to put in here is simply a redefinition for nq. Now in priorityq.cpp, I'm going to provide my very short implementation of that nq that is simply going to call our insert in order. All right, that is it. So let me compile this code and then we'll run our code again so we can see the old output with the conventional queue. Then we'll change that queue to a priority queue and we'll run it again and we'll see how it's different.
All right, so here we've got three, five, six. Now I happen to enqueue these nodes in sorted order, but I didn't have to. Regardless, this still isn't a priority queue because we don't have our highest priority nodes or items towards the head of our link list or the front of our queue. So let me head over to main. I'm gonna include our priority queue dot cpp or excuse me dot h and i'm going to change this to be a priority queue that's all i should have to change and now i run this and i see that at the head of our link list at the front of our queue we now have our highest priority items and towards the end of our link list or the rear of our queue we have our lower priority items so let me try changing these into a different order And we'll see that we're still going to get 653. We still get 653. But if I take this off and I put it at a queue, we're not going to see 653 because it's not going to be inserted in order. We see 635. All right, so we now have a conventional queue in our queue.h and queue.cpp. We have a priority queue in our priority queue.cpp and .h. So we've got two different types of queues and we didn't have to write a bunch of code because we were able to reuse code we'd already written by subclassing our linked list. All right, in closing, you can implement queues in a few other ways. We talked about arrays and vectors as options. You could also implement a queue using a doubly linked list. You'll just want to think a little bit about which end of your link list you want to make your front and your rear of your queue just to try and maintain those constant time complexity and queues and dequeues. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you again for watching and hopefully you learned a lot about priority queues.